story I guess I need to tell you is Blackner Sign Company was kind of the acorn that most of the sign companies in this town grew from. Mm. <clears throat> they did clock signs, neon clocks. They did uh, beer signs. And they had the, they owned the, the neon sign school, Sage. They owned Sage, where my, where my dad learned. Yes, where right, your, your dad okay. learned. And that's where Elmer Hender learned. That's where almost everybody around here learned. Okay. I even knew people in Knoxville that had gone to that school. Okay. I knew people in northern Indiana had gone to that school. Uh, so, and they dispersed within, you know, a couple of hundred miles in all directions. Yeah. And uh, so Lackner, uh, everybody in this town probably worked at Lackner at one time or other. Um, they, they spawned the industry, I think, in this town. <clears throat> now, at the same so, time, American was building and doing a lot of work. But besides Lackner, an American might have been the only other one in town that, of any size. Yeah. Of any, there was a couple of small two-man outfits, you know. Yeah. Well, Lackner, I know Lackner's <clears throat> name comes through here all the time when people find old clocks or old signs or neat, yeah. smart little neon-involved pieces. Right. Uh, that all these collectors love. La I mean, Lackner's a big Absolutely. collectible Absolutely. name. Absolutely. I'm in Florida a few years at a flea market and I see a sign, a, a clock, pretty good size neon clock in Nesbitt Neon Sign Company, Lancaster, right. Pennsylvania. That's neat. And so I talked to the guy who, who was the vendor there, he owned them. And he owned them. And he was selling all kind of junk and included was this. I said, where'd you get this? He says, well, he said that there was an old master neon man in Lancaster, Pennsylvania who was very well known for making clocks and I just happened to get my hands on that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> he, made, he made a dozen clocks maybe in his life. You know what I mean? Would this be your father? My dad, father? yeah, sure. Okay. So, and so he got it at somewhere, who knows yeah. where, it's, you know, in an auction sale somewhere. Okay. But he had a story to go with that clock, and it was expensive. He wanted $700 for that clock. Of course, I understand he'd probably sell it for 150 if that's what you offered him. <laughs> But yeah, this, yeah, yeah, he might end up doing so that. So anyway, uh, that was the only story I got with my dad's business. I mean, uh, okay. you know, related to my dad years later. Uh, my uncle and him split up in 1952, I think. My uncle went to Harrisburg and started his little sign shop, sign shop doing wholesale neon. Uh -huh. And uh, so anyway, it, we, I've been in and out of the business for a long time. But... Uh, Wagner Sign Company spawned a lot of sign shops in the Midwest yeah. uh, because of their schools and, and they had a lot of employees, you know, they, at one time they had a big building right out there next to the Reds ballpark and uh, whenever the Reds played an afternoon game everybody stood up so quit working and leaned out the window and watched the ball game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. They had a sign. Hmm? Was it left field or right field? I don't remember which. And they had a big blue on sign on the building. At the end of the left field. You could see it if you were sitting at home playing. You could see it out there. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Um, well, I'm about wore out. I think, I, yeah, is there anything else any, anybody wants to say? That's great, Jim. I, yeah. I'd like to go back and do I had to take a phone call and I missed a bunch. Uh. <laughs> And uh, maybe if we need to, you can come back again. You know, but that's what I heard was great. I didn't, the stuff about um, Claude Neon, that's, yeah. that's really early. Claude oh, that, really, yeah, see, that was, a, that was a franchise. You had to buy yeah, a license. Yeah, George Claude right. came to the States and sold the franchise. Yeah. And they were expensive. They were like they were. five yeah. figures, and that's yeah. a lot of money yeah. in the late. Well, only people in the big cities like Newark, and that's where it was, Newark, right. New Jersey, which is New York. Yeah. Right. I'm ask a lot of questions uh, that I can't answer, and one of them is about when they, so, so I learned that in the very early days, it wasn't this soft glass, we, it was hard glass. When did they start putting fluorescent powder coatings on tubes? Well, I don't know. Uh, when I was a kid, it? I used to coat them. Uh, you, you did the coating. Yeah, okay. well, you, you had a machine. You put about six sticks of glass in this machine. It pumped, it pumped the solution it up. It would pump up to the top. You yeah. had to turn it off when it got to the top, and then it drained back down. Okay. And you had to let them completely dry before you took them out of there. Yeah. Uh, 
it, it was okay, but sometimes you'd get it thinner than other times. You could mm -hmm. actually hold it up and see a little different light through it better. You know. Did you do it once or twice? Because I've heard they would pump it twice. Uh, well, yeah, we did you pump it twice quite often. Yeah. I mean, pump I've, it up and let it come down and then... And then go back it. up. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've heard that. I, don't, I yeah. think yeah, I do remember doing that, too. But I don't know that I did it all the time. Right. Probably depended on how nice a job they wanted in that way. But clear glass you could get. But then people like Voldark and EGL and uh, Lumalite and... Uh, Mm, there was another one. Anyway, uh, tube, light, tube light. They started send, uh, selling coated tubing. Much mm -hmm. better jobs than you could do in your own shop. Okay. 25 pound boxes, you know, green, 12 miller green, 15 millimeter yeah. green, standard stuff like that, blues. Yeah. I don't know if you know this or, or if it was from the get go, but so the first neon signs were filled with neon gas. Yes. And they started, they came up with this blue gas, this argon mercury combo. And I, was there like a time lapse in there? Was a period? Was there a period where all you could get was red? Well, I don't know. As far as my memory goes, I could always we could always get blue yeah. or red. Okay. And of course that. that yeah. And you okay. could also get helium yellow. Yeah. Uh, the problem with that, it heated up quite a bit. It got real hot when it burned, and in cold weather, when it rained cold, uh, it would be breaking the glass. It got that hot. Okay. So they stopped using that. Yeah. Uh, I also understood since helium is, is very early in the periodic table, yeah. that it, it doesn't, it's, you can't, it's hard to have a good seal, so a helium tube wouldn't last that long. Right. It's well, I, part of that's the heat too, I think. Yeah. It always, you know, the heat. It does make a kind of a weird light. It does. Yeah. It was a yellow one. Yeah. A yellow one. Uh, let's see, there's something else I wanted to tell you. Oh, the biggest thing. In this industry, the greatest thing that ever happened to the industry, the neon sign industry, as far as I'm concerned, was the advent of that new pumping system with, uh, the, without the, you know, the, they call it the... The ground stop cocks? No, yeah, the old no. ground stop cocks, they were terrible. Yeah, well, you had to use a gre grease with grease them. Grease with them, and then when came, somebody invented these, and they're supposedly greaseless, but they're they not are. really. Well, but, no. Well, you've got to have a little bit on them. Yeah. But boy, that made life so much better for tube vendors all over the country. Yes. That was a great, great change. I remember in the summer, got hot in the shop, and that the grease you put grease. on the stopcocks turned to oil. Yeah. <laughs> Ran out. Next thing you know, you lose a bottle of gas, you know. Oh, yeah. Because that sealed your gas, yeah. Con constantly. Yeah, boy, yeah, they also it, came out with these tanks, metal tanks that the gas is in rather than the glass. Oh, yeah, I never used one of those. So, I bet I did buy like a big four liter or five liter. Did they have one? Oh, they had the jumbos. The jumbos. Yeah. That's, the, that's the ones I used. Yeah. I didn't ever saw the metal ones. But, yeah. Uh, that, was, that was a great in intervention for neon. Yeah. Uh, it was really good. When we and, started our business, we started with a glass ground. Stop stop talk, and they came and they came out with that pretty quick, and yeah. we switched over and never looked back. I of think, course. Uh, yeah, somebody came in and showed me one of them. I saw one at maybe it was at a convention. Somebody had mm -hmm. one on display. I said, "Man, this is wonderful." Yeah. So I I ordered one right there, and uh, changed my life. <laughs> I think Transco was one of the early Transco early ones that had. That is that the one from down South Carolina? Yeah, South Carolina. Yeah, okay. I think I bought mine out of some place out west. I can't remember. There was also one. Deco. Maybe. In the Midwest, like Kansas right. City, Nebraska? I think that's the one I got. Somewhere like that. It was a good one. It really yeah. made life a lot simpler for me. Yeah. What are some of the, the, the signs, kind of the memorable neon signs that you remember, like in, in Covington, Cincinnati? I've heard of... The ones some, that I think I've made? What, what, that you made or somebody else made, because I've heard of like some spectaculars. I don't know if it was like Shaman or Wiedemann. It was one on the side of the river that was a really big, it was one of the beers that was a really big, you know, almost like what we call spectacular. I wonder like if it would have been Wiedemann over in Newport. Probably could have been a Wiedemann. Uh, I don't remember. And then you'd I see it from Cincinnati. Sign. Uh, there, was some, there, was, there was some There was. There was. some pretty good signs on buildings in this town. Uh, like the high Regency had that pink, not pink, but purple neon all around it. And that stuff, that's a curved wall. That was tough to put up. Yeah. There. And uh, I made that.
for United Signs. And when they put it up, boy, everybody in town talked about that. And we outlined the building, remember that? Uh, that was, yeah. And then, was that about 70s? Um, no, it was, more, it was later than that. Later. Oh yeah, it was 80s. Yeah, it was in the 80s. Because uh, I didn't, I didn't uh, buy that company. I moved in there until 79. Okay. So it was after that, probably early 80s. Uh, also, Lytle, the Lytle building. Uh, yeah, the blue big neon. Big blue neon around it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's when people really started trying to decorate those buildings. Yeah. And all that white neon that went around those. Uh, there's the atriums. Got the a lot atriums. Of white neon. Two, yeah. There's two buildings. Them, yeah. The stair step. Yeah. The top. Yeah. Made it. That was that glass was. Uh, Either 18 or 20 millimeter, I can't remember. We do some of those repairs, they're 18 millimeter. Okay, that's mm -hmm. I guess that's what I used. I made all that. Uh, oh, that yeah, was designed by Douglas Lee. He, he, the guy he, from New York? Yeah, the guy that did Great White Way. He came to Cincinnati and was commissioned to kind of create a skyline for Cincinnati. Yes. And that's when they started doing the border tubes right. for, around the building. Right. Yeah, he contacted me by phone one day and said he was wanting to put on that building, what's the name of it? The atrium. Yeah. The atrium. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I don't know where he got my name, but he said, but I need somebody to install it. I said, well, uh, the best customer I had, they paid me better than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only one I recommend. Yeah. He said, that's good. He said, I'll give him the job. So he yeah. did. I had a lot of neon. 